What do you guys think? I hope you're doing this with me. It's, it's working out. It's a nice, nice look. Hi everyone, I'm Jody. Welcome to my channel. I'm really glad that you're here today. If you like that logo that's at the beginning of this video, the age, awareness to be grateful for everything. It's such a fun logo and it's great for birthday presents. If you've got a friend that is just not loving their age right now, but you wanna cheer them up in some way and just remind them that it's just, it's a great thing to celebrate. There's a variety of products that we've created that are just below the screen that you can pick up if you're looking for something fun for a friend or maybe something just for yourself. So today's video is a really fun tutorial, perfect for those of you that have dry skin or who seem to get more dry skin through the winter months. I've completely changed up my makeup routine to adapt to my skin's changing needs, getting more dry, as well as the extra dryness that comes from being indoors, electric heat, dry heat, it all creates havoc on our skin. And many of the products that I'm using are drugstore. So use what you have, get creative. You can use different products for different parts of your face. There's really no rules as you guys know when it comes to makeup. So the one thing I don't want you to do is feel like A, you have to have a full face of makeup, or B, you have to go buy new products. You are beautiful exactly how you are with or without makeup, so just know that. I try to keep this tutorial under 15 minutes. It didn't exactly work out that well, but I did try. So when you look at how long this video is, don't worry, we'll get through it and you will get faster as time goes on. I'm gonna share with you not only how you can incorporate good skin care into your makeup look, not just before your makeup look, but into your makeup look. I'm gonna share with you some of my favorite under sculpting techniques from the late Kevin Aquan, and we're not using foundation at all. I know, right? You wanna see how that goes. So if you wanna create this easy look, let's get, oh wait, before we get started, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, now is a good opportunity to do it. Go ahead, we'll wait for you. So if you're ready for the tutorial, let's get started. All right, so let's get this nice, fun, easy, easy, keyword here, tutorial underway. Okay, so first of all, I have to say, you guys, one of the things I love about this career but is challenging is I'm always trying new cosmetics or new skincare, and this redness is from a new product that I can't really recommend. So anyway, if you're like, Jody, what's wrong with your face? It is the hazards of the job sometimes, is just trying stuff and it doesn't always work, but doesn't mean it won't work for someone else. All right, the key to a good, good makeup look is always starting with skincare, as you guys know. I've already washed my face and I've toned it and now I'm just gonna spray it a little bit with this Marine Mineral Plump and Glow. As always, all of these products will be listed. Let's not talk and spray at the same time because that does not taste good. Might be good Marine on your face, not always so good in your mouth. So all these products will be listed in the description box below. All right, so that is the spray. I love spraying this on right as I'm doing my makeup and then I'll always spray it after my makeup to sort of set my powder and then throughout the day as well. I just have really loved this. Then I'm gonna take my Day Glow Serum. This has a derivative of vitamin C in it and this just gives my skin that moisture plumpness that I need to start a good makeup day. And I like to just press this in, paying special attention around my eyes where I need the extra, extra, extra moisturizer and hydration. I feel like it helps keep the moisture in my skin throughout the day longer. And then we'll just let that sit. Now that that has, serum has absorbed, I'm gonna go in with my moisturizer, which is a skin plumping gel cream. This is the Hada Labo, I believe is how it's pronounced. The thing I've loved about this is my foundation looks so much better throughout the day when I have used this. And I can tell when I haven't used it, which is not very often anymore. So I just wanna put that on everywhere. Now you do not need to use a, I just use this brush to put on my moisturizer. I really don't have a reason. You don't need a synthetic brush to put on your moisturizer. I just, some reason I just feel like, I don't know. I just enjoy putting it on with the brush. I just enjoy, maybe that's the massage of the whole thing. I don't know. You guys, this makeup application, I'm really excited to share with you because I've been doing it over the holidays, the last probably two months, and I have really enjoyed the way it looks. And it's a lot easier for those of us that have more maturing dry skin. 
So I let that sit for a few minutes, about 15 minutes. I'll typically go brush my teeth, put on whatever jewelry I'm gonna wear, and then I will come back and it is hydrated. And then as my last step of skincare is my sunscreen, and then we'll jump over to makeup. But this is such an important part that I feel like I skip over it a lot in tutorials. I'll typically do my skincare and then I'll jump on and do a tutorial, but I just feel like it's such an important part. It shouldn't be this and then that. It should be, this is all that. Make sense? Okay, maybe not. <laughs> it did. Okay, so I'm gonna go with my La Roche Posay and I like to use two big pumps, sometimes three if it's really hot out and I'm gonna be sweating. And I have shared that amount with my dermatologist and she said, Jody, that's perfect, it's fine. You don't need any more than that. Some people have you know, commented that I don't use nearly enough. I've used this sunscreen for years and it has really helped minimize any sun damage. So. I think it's 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 a little bit of personal preference and what works best for you. I'm not here to prescribe how much of anything you should or shouldn't use, but that has worked for me, just those two good full pumps. And I love to just let that sit into my skin. It just feels so good and refreshing. Now we're gonna jump into the makeup and today we're gonna do some under sculpting or under painting. And this was a technique that was started years ago by I believe the late Kevin Aquan and there's many books he's written. So if you're really into makeup and technique and working with different style faces, his books, Face Forward is one of my favorites by him and Making Faces um, is another really good one. I'll link them down below in case you're interested. If you just love learning about makeup, he's got some good ones. So what we're gonna do is put on any of our sculpting being our contour and our highlighter and our blush first. And then we're gonna go back and blend it ever so lightly with just a little bit of a base, but you're gonna to wanna to watch that because that's where really the difference is coming from. So to start with my contour, I'm gonna use the Anastasia of Beverly Hills Stick Foundation, and I believe this is in medium, and I'm just gonna do a few little lines right through here just to help cover up some of that receding hairline that I am getting. I don't know if you guys are getting that as much, but it's, it's frustrating. And then I'm just gonna do just a little bit of contour just to give a little bit of fullness because as I'm aging, I'm losing fullness around my cheeks. I didn't know how much I loved my puffy cheeks when I was younger, but now that I don't have them, it's kind of like I really miss them. So I'm going to recreate them just by creating a little bit of a circle right through there. And then I'm just gonna do just a slight little bit on my nose, especially this side, because my nose is a little crooked. So I have to even that out on that one side. And then I don't have a little button nose. So I'm just gonna sort of create that by putting a little bit of contour just up around and then just around the bottom. Now that probably looks like a lot, but it really isn't. And then we're just gonna go and sculpt out a little bit of a jaw. Then with that same contour stick or foundation stick, I'm gonna grab a synthetic brush and go between the corner of my eye and my eyebrow and then go find where that crease is or should be. And that's where I'm gonna start. And I'm gonna kind of curve this up and out. And we will, that will come into play in a little bit. If you don't have, if you have hooded eyes, then create this where you want it. If you have droopy eyelids, don't be afraid of this step. You can take this contour right on top of or outside of your droopy eyelid and create a lift, a bit of a lifted look. And if you don't want to use a brush, if you want to go really quick with this, that that's why these sticks are really handy. Just go right inside there and go out. Something like that. Now don't worry if it's not perfect, we're gonna go back and blend it. You just wanna make sure that it's kind of even. So how are we looking? Are you guys digging this look so far? You're probably going, Jody. what the heck? If you don't have a contour stick or foundation stick, you can always pick up the NYX is one of my favorites. This is the Wonder Stick. It's a dual end, which is one of the reasons I like it. It's very handy, especially for travel, just to throw it in your purse for some touch-ups. It's got the concealer on one end that's a nice thick concealer, and it's got a contour on the other end. You just wanna find the right color for you. And this would do your eyes really easily and fast as well. Next, I'm gonna grab my cream highlighter, and for that, I'm using the Natasha Den Nona cheek trio and I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on my finger I'm gonna go right through the high points of my cheeks I'm gonna go a little bit through my forehead just to give a little bit of a glow because I have dry skin and we're gonna put a little bit of powder so I just want to have a little bit of a glow through there next you're gonna grab your blush if you have cream blush that's always better on our more dry skin but I'm just gonna use this powder blush and I'm gonna go right above 
the contour and right below the highlight. And if you like that burnt blush look, many people are putting a little bit of blush across the center of their nose. I'm not a fan of it for me. I don't really love the way that looks, but of course do whatever makes you most comfortable. Now what you're gonna wanna do, if you have any discoloration and you need to color correct, if you get really purple or blue under your eyes, or you've got some roatia, or you've got some veins around your nose, perhaps the concealer doesn't always cover, and you don't wanna add a lot of concealer so that it does cover, that's when you wanna grab a color corrector. I don't tend to have too much purple around my eyes unless I've eaten a lot of sugar the day before, and then they look like blueberries. <clears throat> This One Step by Stila is one of my favorite color correctors. It really helps to color correct the purples, the blues underneath your eyes or any of those veins or things that you have. Now's the time that you're gonna to wanna to put this on if you need to. If you don't have a lot of discoloration, then concealer is gonna work just fine for you. In fact, that's where we're gonna go right after we blend. And because what we have on so far is mostly cream, you're gonna to wanna to blend this or tap this in with a synthetic brush versus a natural bristle brush. I'm gonna use one of the BS Smalls. I love these brushes for this type of a technique and an application because they clean well, they're not super expensive, and they're synthetic, they're not natural fibers. So they do a nice job of blending in and blurring out creams and liquids. So we're just gonna go in and tap this. We're not trying to blend it, we just wanna melt it into the skin so that you really can't see much of a line. And for me, it is going back into that receding hairline and I like to just tap that in without moving it. I really just wanna push it in. I should have probably used a little bit of color corrector down on my face where the other product was not very friendly to me. I like to start with tapping in that darker color first and then we'll go back in and tap in the other colors. Now I'm gonna grab a damp beauty sponge and I'm just gonna go over any of that highlight area and the blush and really push that into the skin as well so that we're blended everything and nothing seems out of place. Then I'm gonna grab a synthetic brush and go right over our eyelids where we put that bronzer just to give it some softer edges. We'll go back and do the eyes in a minute. I wanna finish our under sculpting first. So you can see part of my face has some coverage to it, but not completely and not too much. Here's where the fun part's gonna come from, you guys. Now, if you've got really, really dry skin, you might wanna grab your CeraVe for this. It works just fine. If your skin is normal to dry, but not really dry, then the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream will work. Your moisturizer might work. It just is gonna depend on how emollient it is. These are both perfect for the technique we're gonna use today. I'm gonna use the CeraVe just to show you how well it can work if you have more dry skin, and it works so good. I'm just gonna grab a little rubber spatula, and I'm gonna get about that much on the back of my hand. And I'm not grabbing a foundation because we've got this moisturizer. I'm going to grab one of my favorite concealers, and this is the Born This Way Multi Sculpting Concealer. And the reason we're gonna grab concealer is because it's thick. It's thicker than foundation typically, and I like to use that for this application because you're adding a good full coverage to your face, but you're blending it down with some moisturizer so that you're adding moisture and coverage without a thicker foundation. And I think concealer covers better in cases like this. So now that I've got those, I'm gonna mix those together. You could do this on the back of your hand. You could do it on your face if you wanted. It's a little harder on the face, I think. And get a nice amount. And then what I wanna do is just put it where we have the most amount of surface, which is typically gonna be our cheeks and our forehead. And then I like to just go a little bit on the center part of my cheeks. So something very similar like that. And you see, I just sort of stamped it on. That's all you really wanna do because we just wanna put the product on our face. Now we're gonna go back in and mold it over our under sculpting. And to do that, you can use your same Kabuka brush. And I like to just sort of stiffle it, stipple, stipple. And we're just gonna go over it ever so lightly. Now what this will give you is a little bit of a um, tinted moisturizer look, which is sort of what we're creating, but we're using it with a, con uh, with a concealer instead of a foundation. If you wanna add a little bit of bronzer to it, you can grab your Lumi Glow Lotion by L'Oreal, this is one of my favorite. You can add this to your combination to give a little bit more of a bronzy glow. You can add some of your Halo if you wanna just add a little bit more of a glow with not the bronze. And it just gives you that natural glow from within, but not too thick of a makeup look, which is just what I wanna go for in the new year. I say that now, but who knows what summer will bring. 
And then I'm just gonna go over that contour on our eyelids, the under sculpting, and see how flawless, you guys, that just a little bit of concealer mixed with some nice moisturizer can look on your skin. And because of the serum and the moisturizer that we put on underneath this, this will look nice all day. And we're gonna add a little bit of powder to it, which will really help. And I don't know if I said that, I used cream puff in this concealer if your skin tone is similar to mine. And I'm not gonna go underneath my eyes with this concoction because I do need more full coverage underneath there. So we're gonna use a true concealer without diluting it down. And see how nice that goes on? Just dilute it down ever so much with that moisturizer and I just love the way that looks. Now we're gonna go in with some concealer because I do need more help there and I am using the e.l.f. Camo Concealer. I've really changed sort of where I put my concealer. I like to put it in the corner because that's where I if I do have just some discoloration, it's usually right through there. So I like to brighten up that whole area. Where you put your concealer is really entirely an individual decision. It's almost like when you make chocolate chip cookies, right? There's a recipe, but you might want more nuts or you might want more chocolate chips. Or in my case, I like mine to be sort of flat and crispy, so I add more butter, less flour. It's just like that when it comes to makeup. Whatever you need to change it to make it look best for your shaped face or your specific needs. That's the one thing about tutorials that I struggle with is I just don't want everybody to think this is exactly how they have to do it with their face. And to warm up the face a little bit, I'm gonna go in with this Physician's Formula. It has a little bit of some bronze in it. It's got some pink, some highlight. This one's so fun because it just has a little bit of every color in it and it just really starts to warm up the face. I like to go right through there and then I'll just put it on as if I was wearing a bronzer and just kind of go around the outside of my face, bring that down on the cheeks a little bit and then underneath the jawline. Next, we're gonna set the under eye concealer with a little bit of light powder. So I just like to press that in all the way to make sure that I don't have any underlying collections <laughs> of concealer. I'm using the Shiseido Future Solutions LX and just tap off any extra powder and go underneath my eyes. And then I like to just powder my T-zone a little bit to help that stay. And as I have been sneezing a lot lately, I'm gonna put a little extra powder right around my nose and then down the center like that. Just in that T-zone where I tend to get a little bit more oil slick than I like. And then we'll take that powder and go over our eyelids to set anything that we put there and act almost as a primer for our eyeshadow. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of work on our eyebrows. I'm gonna try this new Too Faced pomade in a pencil. I have not tried this one before, so we're gonna see how it looks. It, had a, it said it was pomade, so I thought, well, maybe it's gonna last a little longer. So I'm curious to see if it does. So once I put this on, I, give you my initial thoughts of it. I'm gonna finish my eyebrows off camera or else this will be a tutorial you'll need to have like part one and part two. Um, oh, I, I like the brush. I like the angled application. I think I like the color. What color is this? Soft brown. I like that because my brows are sort of on the cool side and I I wanna warm them up just a little bit but not be too, not too warm. Mm. It's pretty soft. So I feel like I'm gonna use a lot of it without really needing to. And maybe that's because of the pomade that's in it. Ugh. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be a fan of this. It's, I think it's too soft for me. I don't press hard, but I do wanna be able to sculpt and sort of define and create. I'm not trying to just fill in some brow. I, uh, I'm creating brows and this might just be a little too soft. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not loving it. I feel like it's too soft of a formula. And if you add any heat from within, you know what I'm talking about, I think it's gonna be sort of a slippery, slidey mess. I'll go back to the Anastasia of Beverly Hills. So to do our eyeshadow, I'm gonna grab the Magnify's Blush Edition Rimmel Eyeshadow Palette. I really love those colors. So we're gonna grab this more yellow banana type color because I wanna add some brightness to my eyelids without adding shine or glitter or shimmer. I know you guys are gonna be like, Jody, that looks like mustard. And I guess to some degree, I prefer to think of it as a cream puff instead. I'm gonna go across my whole lid, going all the way out, outer corner, inner corner, lash line, up to that contour line that we made. I don't think it's showing up that well on camera, you guys, but it's just a nice bright look without looking powdery or cakey or shiny which was what I was going for, so I'm glad that worked out. Then I'm gonna go in with that same small brush, and I wanna pick up this darker cocoa color over here, and I just wanna go underneath and trace that contour line that we created earlier. 
and pull that out. This is just gonna help give a natural definition. And again, hooded eyes and droopy eyelids just go on top of, on the outer side of your eyelid. And then you'll wanna cover anything underneath as well. So you don't wanna just go on the outside and leave it. You wanna go on the outside and then color anything underneath it. So that there's a seamless color story there. And then we'll just pull that out. So you can see I'm going pretty close to my eyebrow. Um, I'm just leaving about this much room which is what you want for this look. And if I can get through this whole tutorial without taking the back of my hand with that makeup on it and putting on my white sweater, I'm going to be impressed with myself. I should just wipe it off, but what fun would that be? Let's just, let's just see if we can't make it the whole tutorial. Fingers crossed. Anybody that knows me knows that that is asking a lot. Now I just want to go and curl my lashes. This is an important part. I know not everyone likes to do it. For me, it's one of those things. There's a few rules that I have when I do my makeup. Have to wear sunscreen, have to curl the lashes, have to finish my mascara with waterproof. Those are rules I just cannot break. All right, now I'm going to grab my waterproof eyeliner. This is Deep Cocoa Matte by House Labs. And I want to just go underneath tight line from the outer corner all the way in to the inner corner of my eye. And then with that same eyeliner, I'm just gonna go to the bottom of my lashes, starting that outer corner, and make little feathery strokes. But on the bottom, I wanna stop where my lash line stops. And then I'll just flip that around and use the brush on the other side of the eyeliner. And just make sure that that eyeliner stays right at my lash line and doesn't fall down any farther down my eye and blend it so it just looks like part of my natural lash line. Next we'll go with mascara. I'm gonna use the Professional Mascara by Makeup Forever. I like to do two coats of any mascara. This mascara makes it really easy to do two coats because the first coat is with this little tiny brush. And then the second coat is the other end and this is to volumize. And I'll go a little bit under the lashes. And to finish off lashes, I will put a third coat with a waterproof mascara. This is the Defensals by Lancome. I just like to do this so that I don't have any transfer underneath my eyes. None of that darkness that we just put product to cover. And it helps from keeping any flaking that can happen from your mascara drying out throughout the day. Now some waterproof mascaras can be drying because a lot of them contain alcohol. I wash my face with coconut oil every day. So I'm constantly putting oil back into my eyelashes. If you don't wash with a nice oil or moisturizing face wash, then you may not want to use a waterproof mascara every single day because it can be drying if you don't put moisture back into your lashes. And then the final step with our eyes, I'm just gonna take a really small, tiny brush and I'm gonna go back into our eyeshadow palette. I wanna grab this really pretty white. I'm gonna mix the two together. And I just wanna go into the corner of my eye. There isn't any fallout from this Rimmel either, you guys, which I'm happy about. I think you can get this at Walmart. I'll link it down below. And I'm usually not too bashful with this light brightening underneath in this corner of my eyes. I think it just helps you look awake and bright. And then I will take the same small brush back into those same colors. And just to coordinate it all, I'll just go right underneath my brow. I hope you guys are doing this with me. I It's a fun, easy, nice, light look. I say light. For those of you that don't wear much makeup, you're going to say that is not light, Jody. We're going to finish up with lips. I'm using Subculture by MAC Lip Liner. This is a good lip liner for a variety of skin tones. It also is complementary to a lot of different lipstick colors, which is why I love this one, because you can either apply a lot of it and put a light color over it, or you can just do the outer edge and get more of a darker lip color. I don't need a crayon box full of lip liner pencils with every color in the rainbow. I That's why I think I love this one. And then I'll go in with the Maybelline Superstay. This is a liquid type lipstick. I love it because it stays a long time. I'm not gonna apply it right to my lips because I've learned so much about bacteria and it's freaking me out right now. So I'm gonna go in with just a synthetic brush and paint it on. And you guys, if you're looking for a long lasting like lip stain or lip color, these vinyl inks by Maybelline are pretty darn impressive. This is the color Peachy. It dries down a little bit more to a matte, but it just gives that natural look like your lips have sort of that natural color. And as we age, as I age, my lips are starting to lose some of that 
color to them. Now from here you can add a lip gloss to it. If you've got more cool eyes, you can add a cooler lip gloss. If your eyes are a little bit more on the warm side, if you want some different colors and you want to warm up this lip look, then you can just add a little bit of more warm lip gloss. You'll have coordinated it and it, it will look gorgeous. And now that your base has been sitting while you did your eyes, you can take a look and see if there's any other areas that you want to add more coverage. If you feel like you're shiny somewhere, you can go back and just powder it a little bit. And there's our final look. I hope you guys enjoyed Enjoyed this tutorial. It's really super easy. It's just a different way of applying some of the products that you already have. I really love this look and you're able to adapt the application and the formulation of the products to your unique skin. Whether you have dry skin, add a little bit more moisturizer to your concealer, or if you have more oily skin, then you can just use a foundation, a tinted moisturizer, or just a drop or two of your moisturizer into a concealer. But you can see it's a light, natural, flawless look and pretty much any concealer will work. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Pass this along to any of your friends that you think might be looking for a fun under sculpt tutorial and I will see you next time. Bye bye.